If there's anything more difficult than earning respect as a female sports person, it's carving a spot in the world of sports journalism as a woman. Cass Naidu achieved this when she became South Africa's first female cricket commentator. But that's just a small part of her story, as I discovered when chatting to her recently. For far too long, sports has been the preserve of the male species, and historically, sports journalism has been male-dominated. Then, Cass Naidu came along and changed the rules, and I'm excited to spend the afternoon with this dynamic game-changer. In cricketing terms, Cass could best be described as an all-rounder who cut her teeth commentating on runs, balls, overs and wickets, but who has since branched out into the broader sporting arena. Cass, how are you? It's lovely to see you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, if you love sport, if you played sport. I'm one of three siblings, the youngest, the only daughter, so you can just imagine, brought up <laughs> among boys. I played netball as a young girl, but once I decided I wanted to talk about sport, it was time to stop playing sport. What got you interested in journalism? When I decided I wanted to become a cricket commentator, there were no rules as to how to go about it. No other women had done it in South Africa. So I decided if I wanted to talk about sport, perhaps I needed to learn how to interview, how to learn more about TV and radio, and I enrolled uh, for a journalism course, knowing that at some stage in my life, all the rules that I'd learned on the course would uh, be useful and it certainly has played a huge role in my life. What challenges have you faced as a female in sports reporting? Being the first female cricket commentator, everyone had a view. I learned very early in my career that unless I learned to take feedback, I was not going to get anywhere. So I used to take a very strong cup of coffee, sit down at my computer, Google Cass Naidu, read all the negative stuff, have a big fat cry, eat some chocolate, go to bed, get up the next morning and commentate. Because I think everyone has the right to have an opinion. You just can decide how you'd like to receive it. Would you like to sit down and have a cup of coffee? Let's and continue that. this. <laughs> Cass made such an impact as a commentator that Cricket South Africa appointed her to shape and promote the brand and image of CSA and the Proteas, which was no small achievement for someone who had started out as a print media reporter. Cass, how did you make the transition from print media to radio? At the time I was studying at the Durban University of Technology, I got the highest mark for court and crime reporting and headed off to the Mercury asking them to get involved in their sports department and there was a no-go zone. Got into the daily news, again wanted to do sport and they said, it's okay, we have a woman doing this already. So I resigned, packed my bags, moved to Johannesburg and got a job as a producer on the John Robbie Show. And how did you break into television? Well, they say uh, luck comes to people who work hard. So from the age of 14, I worked really, really hard to prepare myself to become a cricket commentator. So when I was spotted in the uh, newsroom by Robert Marawa asking, so what are you doing here? I said, I'm here to follow my dream to become a commentator. He said, let me introduce you to SABC Sport. Why don't you go in for an audition? Went in for an audition, had a few training sessions and thought nothing of it and then Gerald de Kock resigned and I was thrown into the hot seat to host the 2003 Cricket World Cup. What got you interested in cricket? At the age of 14, I was um, walking past the lounge at home and I heard this incredible Caribbean accent commentating cricket. It was a woman's voice talking about the game and drawing me in. I turned to my mom, I said, that's it. I'm going to be South Africa's first female cricket commentator. And uh, my brother at the age of 16 said, I'll be your mentor. And he did, and he worked with me for a few years until I got my, my plum role at the age of 25. What did your brother teach you for six years about cricket? He allowed me to talk cricket. I think that was the important part. If you wanted a voice in the sport, someone needed to indulge you. So from a very early age, he indulged me. And then he allowed me to um, bunk school at around half past one, get to a cricket game at Kingsmead so we could sit together and watch live cricket. Cricket commentators need a vast knowledge to fill the gaps when nothing's happening on the field. How did you prepare for this? I love talking. I think I, I talked 
to everybody about cricket, even people who didn't like it before I got to TV. So once I got onto TV, I just enjoyed having conversations. I've worked with incredible commentators from around the world um, over the past decade. And because I'm obsessed with cricket, that is just an understatement, I'm truly obsessed with the game, I can find things to talk about. What are some of the most exciting matches that you've covered? The biggest match I'd ever covered was the 4-3-8 game in 2006. Uh, halfway through the game, South Africa were losing horribly. And at the end of the game, we'd won this historic match and I was celebrating and crying, mascara running, and then realizing I have got to be the one going onto the field to host the post-match presentation. Um, I quickly pulled myself together, got onto the field, and introduced Herschel Gibbs to a worldwide audience, talking about how he was this Chuck Norris hero for South Africa. Days later, I had been receiving emails from Vietnam, from Afghanistan, from around the world because this match had caught the attention of the world. And to get that kind of feedback told me that cricket really is a global sport. What would you say are some of your major achievements to date? My biggest achievement is becoming a mom of three because I think it's really difficult for women who achieve to at some stage in their lives take a break and focus on family. But becoming South Africa's first female cricket commentator was important for me because it taught me how to break boundaries. And now that's kind of one of my pet hobbies, is every time I find something that is a big challenge, I go for it. G Sport for Girls, how did you come up with the idea and what's the main aim? Whenever I spoke to sportswomen, they always complained about a lack of support. So Rake and I took a long walk to just discuss this issue that was really bugging me. And I decided to resign from my radio show and launch G Sport. We taught ourselves how to build a website, launched an online initiative, and since 2006 have been telling the good story of women's sport. What has the initiative achieved to date and what are you most proud of? Well, G-Sport has told well over 5,000 stories since it launched in 2006. We've honored over 70 women um, since the start. So for me, the biggest achievement is the fact that we're still going. What are the future plans for G-Sport for Girls? We're looking to take this initiative around the country and take the women's sports heroes to the stars of communities who are rising up. And I think sometimes you just need one kind word, one positive affirmation that says, I can do this. And future plans for Cass and I do. This may sound silly, but I live my life in the moment. I savor each and every moment and I really try to ensure that whatever I'm doing at the time, I give my fullest energy to. My plan is just to have a daily plan because there aren't any guarantees of where we're going to go and what's going to happen. A part of your job is to be in the public eye. How would you describe Cass Naidu's style? I'm quite a simple person. I often describe myself as a plain Jane. When I got into cricket broadcasting, I was given a double-breasted navy blue blazer to wear. And I said to them, I really am not trying to, to be a man. I really want to celebrate being a woman and celebrate my femininity as women in sport Unless we celebrate ourselves and be who we are, we will become who society thinks we want to be. But I'm such a simple person that uh, it's actually quite scary when I have to be dressed for a shoot, for instance, and they say, what is your style? And I say simple, and I just have the stylist kind of go, okay, we'll see if we can work with this. Any advice for aspiring female sports journalists? Credibility is very important. I think uh, spend time uh, honing your skills, your knowledge, um, understand that all the glitz and glamour that you see is less than 10% of, of what is the, the total package of anyone in this industry. Um, I think it is a man's world. It will continue to be a man's world. Don't fight it. Just become better at it. Cass, thank you for spending time with us and for inspiring us. It's been such a pleasure being with you. I'm heading off to radio to host my sports show. Come to studio and meet the team. I would love that. Cass behind the microphone has all the focus and energy of a first-class batsman at the crease. You're listening to Game on Amplified right here on Radio 2000. Are we talking darts now with the darts president? You've got some warm-up matches coming up, up against the EP Kings in PE. How important is it for you to get going right from the word go to, to get your combinations right? Cass Naidu doesn't believe in playing by the rules, but that doesn't mean she isn't a good sport. What's more is she's very passionate about levelling the playing field for women in sport, and in my books, that makes her a champion.